So this uh, project is to scratch a personal itch. Okay. So the roads are too damn fast. Um, so about me, I have two kids, I'm a software engineer. I live in the city on the east side. I love walking and biking in the city. I have kids, bike with my kids on the back of the bike. The roads are still too damn fast. <laughs> so when I first moved to the city, I learned what the 25 mile an hour speed limit actually means. This is Walnut Street where I was living at the time, and this is a highway. This is it's on the west side of the city. If you recognize this, is like latest days right there. Google Street, the other day, but this is a highway. Um, and partially this makes sense because they got to get people in the core of the city and out of the core of the city because that's where we have all our amenities and things happen down there. It's why Lancaster's done so well. Um, we have cool stuff to get to. And you know, in the broader context, people are coming in from all different directions. They got to get down. And that means that our city streets are these arterial ways of getting down to the city. And also, these are all state highways. Right, so they let you cut. You know, a lot of this is people cutting straight through. As a matter of fact, like it's really ugly if you put like two random points on different sides of the city. Even when the the, um, the time is the same to take the highway, Google routes you through the city because of eco friendliness and like saving gas. But it, it's even worse because. The city is super fast to get through. So it, it puts you that way for a lot of different reasons. Here's another good example where it's it's literally 20 minutes to go around up on the highway, but they still send you down the city where literally you're, you're driving right in front of thousands of people's houses to take this route up um, Queen. So this weighed on me like quite a bit. So every time I walk down a street, other people tell me I'm overthinking it. You know, because I walk down a street and I just feel the rush of cars. I feel the wind from the cars. I'm like, they're going too fast. Like, I know they're going too fast, but other people tell me I'm crazy, so I decided to get some data. And who else but Google to tell me this data? <laughs> so I made a spreadsheet of all eight of these major, and all these are two lane roads that go through the city and are 25 miles an hour. 25 miles an hour. So this is what I find, right? It's like you get on the walnut, you know, right off the highway here, and you get all the way to F and M in five minutes. So that, you know, if you do the average here, that's 21.6 miles an hour. Speed limit is 25. That's assuming this is, I, I, you know, this is not the middle of the night. This is assuming you stopped at a lake or two your still average speed is 21.6 miles an hour. What the fuck, right? <laughs> you lie, bro. <laughs> no, they tell me. Well, you'll see. <laughs> so I sat down and got the business. So I made a quick script that used the Google APIs. Every 15 minutes, I ran this thing and plotted it into Influx TV. So I get you know miles per hour, distance and miles, and duration. I put it into Influx TV every 15 minutes. I've been doing it for the past week now. And this is what it looks like. So this is left as miles per hour to get to the entire city each way. Um, and the blue line is the speed limit. And you can see at certain points of the day, like literally Google is telling you on the when you pull up Google that you can make it through the entire city faster than the speed limit. That's even including lights. That's crazy. And you can see that like, in the middle, there's some fun stuff here, like Saturday, Sunday, not as much traffic as the weekdays, and the whole day bogs down. And, you know, Google does some really interesting stuff with the way they do some live traffic and so on. Um, and these are the four fastest ones. You can see like a peak. These things are like 24 miles an hour on average. So Google tells people they're going this fast. The question is like, how fast are they actually going? Right? So it's time to go undercover. It's time to, to drive these routes myself. Um, so I, I decided to test my system. I got on my bike and I did Strava and I went a big loop one day. Uh, very small loop, very fast, but I'm out of shape. And I 
then had to come up with a way to transfer this GPX file they give you from Strava into a GeoJSON file, which I can then overlay on a map. And my goal is to overlay, basically, speed as a color. So like red would be fast, purple would be very fast. Um, and actually, this is a side note. Does anybody use GitHub Copilot yet? This is what GitHub Copilot did for me when I said, I put like, that I wanted, I like literally wrote the comment above, it filled in the entire thing for me. I had to like change two lines, it was crazy. You should be using it. Um, I created, I, I love Mapbox, for those of you, it's very fun. You just create a new map with this tiny little bit of JavaScript. And I also was experimenting with Next.js for this. Does anybody use that at all? It's pretty neat. Um, and Next.js is cool, hello. Uh, Next.js is pretty cool because it lets you um, pull files and files some really easy, like static files and stuff. So I pull all the little tracks I made off after running through my script, iterate through each track, right? For each um, segment data, I took it five seconds at a time. Each segment is one second. It tells you the speed. Um, I get the average speed. And then pick a color for that speed. So anything faster than 35 miles an hour gets purple. Okay? You, you basically create this big blob, this feature blob. And it contains the description and the color and so on. And then I add, I add the source to the map. That's pretty much all I did. Like, you know, this is, this is all the, the guts of the code. It took me a lot longer than it went low, but <laughs> that's the guts of the code. And there, boom, I have it. This is my bike route with the different colors. And it's, it's not 35 miles an hour. Or, or, or 30 miles an hour being red. I wasn't going that fast, but I had it. Now it's time to go drive. So I dropped my kid off at daycare and I started driving. I just drove, like it was 8.30, I drove for an hour. And to be clear, I would not drive, like I drove with traffic, okay? So I wasn't trying to keep raining out there, you know, but there's a lot of traffic out there. I'm not the only person going this fast, I swear to God. But I, I drove and I took notes, okay? And what I saw was about shock. Uh, first of all, quick, quick note. This, this is crazy, okay? This, this, this is scary. But if you get hit by a vehicle at 20 miles an hour, you're, you're, you're probably gonna live, you know? But like at 40 miles an hour, it's insane. Like you're probably gonna die. Like, and it's, it's, it's a big deal how fast you go. And you know, to, to reiterate, I live in this city, lots of people live in this city. When you're driving down Walnut, you are driving down or Chestnut, you are, like, there are literally homes the entire way, like just packed in. So anyway, about to show you the map. Purple is about 35 miles an hour, okay? And this is the map. There's a lot of purple on it. I'm gonna zoom it in a little bit. But you can also go to too damn fast dot Purcell dot app if you wanna like play around. It's a very nice little app. Um, and actually I can click it here because, you yeah, know, why not? And to me it's crazy. Entire segments here, so you get off the highway and you get onto Walnut, purple. 35, we're all just cruising. I'm just sitting there. There's no lights in my way. We're all just cruising. There's zero reason for me to go slow. It feels like a highway. Same thing on the way out on Chestnut. Some of these sections where I slowed down a lot simply got unlucky with traffic. But those lights are designed to let you shoot. Same thing all the way across the city. The worst thing is down here in this part of the city. This is like a lower income part of the city as well. Look at this, they don't do shit. You get off the highway here, and you're, you're, you're like, literally you don't hit a light on um, Queen here, like literally halfway up the city. You just, you just get out. So anyway, this stuff is, is you know, shocking, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna make this thing big again. Um, and it, this is crazy. Um, here's an example of Walnut. So when you get on to Walnut, you're on a highway, right? Um, you get on to Walnut, and this is what you see up on the top here, this little 25 mile an hour flashy light thing. And then they have a little police thing here. Okay, so they, they, they know that there's a problem here. They, they put the bare minimum, you know, hey, by the way, you really should go fast. But then the highway, I wish I had a better picture of like, it feels like how, there's, the, the cars are well off to your side, you have a big old 12 foot lane, 
and there's the lights are there are just green all the time. All the way until you get to Lancaster Brewing, there's only two lights on the highway. And they're marked here. And you just go really fast. You, like, it really is hard to control yourself. So, oh yeah, and I, I took all these purple sectors and I put those in the Google Maps and I ran those for a full day. And this is crazy too, like on the, the orange one, which is the first part of Queen that I showed you, um, down south, you can, the Google Maps thinks you're going 30 miles an hour. That's a 25 mile an hour road. Google Maps is like charting this as 30 miles an hour. They think they can get you through there. So it, this goes back to the earlier point that they're just cutting people through. So people are using our city as a way to cut through really fast and get to the other side when, you know, obviously. Anyway, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna propose solutions here. I don't have them yet. I have a bunch of ideas. But for me, I got really excited by this because I was really surprised by what I saw. So I'm ready to take it to the next level here. Um, I want to analyze light timings. I want to get a drone up there. I have an old drone. I want to use it for once. Uh, get a drone up and like try to see how fast cars going. You can buy a radar gun for like 80 bucks. So I sit there and track the cars and like get a good feel. Like how fast are they going? It'd be cool if you had like fixed cameras at certain people's houses along the busy lanes. I bet if you knocked on their door, they'd be up for letting you help, right? And you could just really easily track how fast the cars are going with some type of ML thing and maybe make a live map showing real speeds. Because I was scared to go too fast, right? Like I got the you know 35 miles an hour, I'm like, I don't want to like, you know, get in trouble here because it's all in Strava, right? But like people were going really fast. And like it'd be cool to catch people going 55 miles an hour. Because you get hit by a 55 mile an hour car, you're dead. Like period. You're squishy. Uh, so I want to publish the data and I want to get people's attention. So road's too damn fast and it's to be continued. Oh, I'm happy to take questions. Like, so like, when did you bring your data to the city or whoever? Ah, this is, this is the start. I didn't and think I'd find such juicy shit. I found this all yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone seen the City Lab Nicer Cities online platform that they use? Yeah. What's that? Yeah, I've seen that. Have you seen the Project Zero? Mm-hmm. So really interesting because they're... So the city lab thing is kind of relevant for the minor detail. The important detail is project is zero, so they're aiming for uh, public planning to do for zero or traffic fatalities, particularly for pedestrians and bicyclists. Yeah. And so it's uh, the other end, I would say, of the how do we get to a better streets, because it's definitely legislated and prescriptive top down. But as far as where to potentially find municipal support for what you're doing, I think there could be some interesting and healthy conversations because my understanding is the city wants to engage citizens with this city lab thing so you could potentially yeah, yeah, sure it's, it hasn't done anything so far. I mean like the reality to me is like I rip through the city. I rip through it every time and I'm always shocked. And the reality is I kind of feel like you need to kind of have a billboard. Maybe it's time to buy a billboard. You know? <laughs> like there needs to be kind of like a reality that like these elected politicians are doing just the bare minimum to save face in my opinion. Somebody needs to get up there and be like, you know, whole sections of Walnut have no lights, and people can go as fast as they want. They're two lane highways. Yeah. I mean, Maybe it should feel so safe to get fixed. That's, that's exactly it. Kind of last one. Last one. So I did the. I just got back on the race. Do. I was in your way for two weeks. The roads are a lot more narrow there. Yeah. The cars are a lot smaller. There's there's a yeah. million things you can do. The reality is somebody's got to go do them, and I'm not in a position to like literally go for a roundabout in, but that might be what it takes, right? Because when people just get in the mindset that they can just rip, they're going to rip. So they did. Yeah, the last year at crosswalks in Germany, there's two lanes. One is for bicycles, one is for pedestrians. Every yeah, yeah. It's pretty wild. It's really, really good place to Years ago, they did the walkability study. The brothers and salt. We like did a lot of this sort of data gathering. And out of that came the Walnut Street bike lane and the narrowness of that. And we they flipped Mulberry over. Yeah, and that used to be two lanes that had not been made in one way. And they went through, you wouldn't even believe that the, the city residents themselves were in an uproar about The people that lived along the street did not want 
it mm. to get safer or slower. They wanted to get in that quick. They, and they, they just didn't want things to change. Mm. Construction, mm -hmm. like when presented with this data, they would not like the sit they would ask us. We we're like, no, I love it the way it is. <laughs> and so then, yeah. So, but they actually that. I'm sure you could find that study yeah, and that and that whole thing because I think there was I can't remember anymore. There's more to it uh, that they never got to do. Essentially, it was like, oh, it's such a battle to flip the walnut to what it is. Mm -hmm. Like they did, they did an entire year of like different tests of layouts of that road and different things. It was like such a nightmare. But you will, to your point, there's you're joining a fray. You know, there's there's a there's, there's there are people that are into it. And we will help, and I think I think your extreme measures, shall we say, <laughs> will be well received. I actually really like the way you put the data together. It's amazing. And I will also preface this by saying that I am a thousand percent guilty of being someone who goes way too fast because you honestly don't know how fast. Oh, I, I, once I didn't show, but there's a headline in like a, I saw online that's like there like pedestrian deaths rose. Drivers slash pedestrians to blame. And I was like, you're really gonna blame the drivers and pedestrians for the fact that like yeah. <laughs> you literally created this like perfect. But it's it's not always the, it's not just the road, right? I mean, the, the, don't get me wrong. Like I live in Manhattan Township, and like every road there looks like a highway. Yeah, but you don't have like literally piles of houses on each one. Like, no. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, our cars have gotten so safe and ride so well that you do not know you are going 55. That's right. He's like, my wife's like, do you know how fast you're going? I'm like, you literally don't and don't look. Because yeah. I'm, I'm not going too fast for conditions. And that is, and that, again, that's not good. I'm not <laughs> saying that's good, and I admit it all. But people don't really realize how fast they're going. Because the cars are yeah. here, safer, or at the very least, they feel um, like they're not going that fast. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a, a 2018 Honda Accord. I could be going 70 on a back road in, you know, in Strasbourg, and it feels like 35. That's just how it feels. The, the simple fix is just simply to just take the light system and just, nope, it does not. So it's basically built that if you maintain its constant speed, it will have your light turn green for you. But what that really means is if you're late, you That's need right. to up to catch it. it. And, then you, and then by the time you're out on your way out of the city, you're slowing down. Or you are going pretty fast, you're catching it, yeah. and then you get to a huge like four block section with no lights, right. and then you can just go. You're just right. like unleashed. Yeah, totally. Like, like uh, did you feel like you were going too fast? Like, if you hadn't had this in your mind that this was the study you were doing, no, I do feel like you were doing something. I do. I got like this all the time. Yeah, that's why I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm throwing the first stone, but I, you know, like, uh, no, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not without guilt. Yeah. You need to understand the bias behind the data. Then, so. Or, or lack of guilty, the guilty of uh, doing the old. Well, if I turn right quick enough, I can catch the I can catch the lights and keep going. You got to you know the timings work. Yeah. So if you like turn right, it's like. Or I just lost that green arrow, but they're still red. Yeah. The Vision Zero is not entirely dead. It was coming up recently on their attempting plan mm. for the a Water Street redo. If Water Street. Well, it's going to be getting a lot slower. Well, a lot, a lot of people, I have a fair number of people use Water Street, and the work will be affecting the intersections where Water Street crosses other things too. So, for instance, some of those crossroads are going to be getting raised crosswalks or an entirely raised intersection. Yeah. Um, but the problem with the m most of the roads you mentioned is that they're state roads and the state doesn't have much incentive as far as I can tell to do anything about it. Lancaster City does, but they can only affect roads like Water Street or um, right. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah, but they will be doing as they're, I mean, but they seem to have some effect because they're being able to put in water gardens at some of the corners on state roads. And those are not only aimed for the water thing, but they are also, the way they stick out is in, aimed to help calm traffic to the limited extent that it seems that I don't know. But I mean, they are aimed as traffic. I mean, like most of the stuff they're doing to roads is trying to serve multiple ends. Usually they're trying to combine Vision Zero with the, um, with 
the uh, water problems, and then anything else they can get beyond that is gravy. Yeah. I know one of the, one of the plans was to take, I think it's Cherry Street, and then the and which is like kind of like an alley, uh, and it goes all the way across the city to the train station essentially. Mm -hmm. And it's like turning the whole thing into like pedestrian only zone, and like like bikes and, and pedestrians, and like just kind of make it a freeway for for foot traffic. Right? Nice. Yeah, right. But uh, yeah, I love that idea a lot. Hey, great. Yep. Ken's written is next, but you can do it out. Uh, uh, I'll go I will surprise him how little content I have. Uh, I do apologize. I got too excited. No, not at all. Good. Just don't get kind of last name, you know, just how much data is available. That sort of thing. Yeah, there's, there's part of me that says it's fascinating that this, all this data is available and also downright terrifying. And I don't want to get anywhere. Not coming from me. There's a, I don't know how far I've moved that in the last few years. Like they, they have definitely some of those little radar things are probably feeding data back to the city. Sorry, Dad got in trouble for sharing too much information. With that, quite a while ago, he wrote a you know the um, what was it the Lancaster City 911 where you can look for all the lights and 911. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For all the systems yeah. that are going on. He had one where they were actually highlighting locations on that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That was uh, Jake Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's our dad. So four brothers. I'm Matt. He doesn't No, I'm usually traveling too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, but anyhow, I know it's beautiful, but um, I'm back. So um, he wrote a map that was hooked with Google Maps and the uh, nice. did some really cool stuff, and they ended up asking him to shut down because he was sharing too much public space. Oh, well, I looked at it and I'm on one and it would have been awesome to have an app. Well, you did it! Yeah, it was great. Because at the time I look at like, where like, the cross streets are and I'm like, I know that's supposed to be, but I don't know where. The problem is that people can use it to geolocate the crime data. Right. That was the problem. They didn't want parts of the city to look like the crime data. Look like they were crime data. Alright. Yeah. Yeah. World of yeah. story, trust data. <laughs> It's all public though, that's the crazy part. Yeah, well I think, yeah, so don't get me started on that topic. So I'm supposed to talk about something else. And I, should, I feel like I have to declare my interest too. I'm a cyclist, I also have young children, so those are my big interests.